Hi guys, Epic PC Cases here, and today we're going to do a system build for you. It's a highly requested sort of topic. A lot of people will be like, oh, teach us how to build a computer. And uh, I know a lot of people don't know how to do it still. So uh, we're going to teach you guys how to build a very, very epic computer. Uh, you're talking three solid state drives, H60, A50 watt, Maximus Gene Z. That's the Z68 version. You've got the i5 2500K, which is going to be overclocked, of course. Uh, of course, you've got the rip drawers, two pairs of, and the uh, Phantom GTX 580. Uh, today, we're looking at uh, Phil's build, which is actually uh, my business partner, and he's building a really crazy computer. Uh, he's in Brisbane for a wedding, but he actually lives in uh, Spain now. He used to live in Brisbane, but he lives in Spain. Uh, he's responsible for the website and uh, all the cool animations and stuff that we do. Uh, the parts, how much does the parts cost? Uh, 2 8 2800 holy jeez. Uh, Half of that. Big chunk system. of that is these things. Uh, you've got the solid state drives, the Vertex 2s, and you've got uh, one of the 120, another 240, and you've got two 240 gig drives there. Uh, of course, we've got the Maximus 4 Gene Z, uh, the motherboard. And uh, this is based on the Z68 uh, B3 revision, so it doesn't have any SATA problems. And uh, obviously the Z68 chipset is absolutely fantastic for everything. So it was a good choice, it's a mini ATX motherboard, but we're not going to do quad fire or anything like that. Uh, the hardware itself is very interesting, it's a very small motherboard, and uh, there's nothing really too crazy here, it's just standard ROG with all the nice sort of cooling heat sinks and everything you'd expect from an ROG motherboard including the start and the error codes and stuff like that so when you're overclocking you've got a clue. So what we're actually doing with this video today is we're going to be saying we're going to review everything here and then we'll show you how to set up a computer because a lot of people have said to us you know <coughs> we don't know how to set up a computer and uh, we'd love you to show us how. So this is definitely a good start um, for setting up, up a computer and what you need to do is just make sure you've got a motherboard, CPU, you've got some RAM, you've got a graphics card, some form of hard drive, be it normal standard ones or solid state drives. And if you're overclocking, definitely get something to cool that CPU. Uh, we're overclocking an i5, uh, 2500K, uh, which can go to crazy lengths of water. And um, the H60, H60 will definitely get it there. Uh, next up is the graphics card which is the 580 uh, and this is actually the 3 gig version and uh, Phil will be running on several, how many screens are you running on? Uh, two at the moment. Two, so two screens, uh, so this is definitely good for that. But as you can see there, the actual card itself is incredibly well cooled. Um, the entire thing is just a massive heatsink and uh, the only downside to this would be you'd need a lot of airflow in your case because it does exhaust a lot of the heat straight into the case. But other than that, 580, it's just an impressive sort of, you'll be able to overclock this. You won't even need on water, you'll be able to overclock it a fair bit. Um, as you can see, the heat sink is just impressively massive. Next up, we've got the i5, uh, the 2500K. Uh, a lot of people tend to buy this chipset because it is a lot cheaper and the performance you can get out of it in terms of overclocking is ridiculous. Um, some people get up to four or five gigahertz alone on water and um, we're definitely going to be trying to push this to the limits, so very cool. For the RAM, we've gone for the Rip Jaws. Uh, G-Skill do make a really good RAM and a uh, lifetime warranty as well with most RAM. So we've got the uh, 12, 1280 versions and uh, they're fairly good timing and they'll be good for overclocking as well. Now we'll have a look at the H60. So, basically it's an all-in-one water cooling kit. And I've always been curious, but yeah, they do actually give you a fan. So they give you a fan of some sorts. And um, basically, it just works by you attach that to any 120 slot, and that into the CPU socket, and away you go. The pump is actually housed in there and it's a low profile, so it won't get in the way of things. And you just connect that up to wherever you want to go. So that should keep our CPU relatively cool. The last bit, of course, is the 580. Uh, 580. Uh, dyslexic. <laughs> I read 580. <laughs> like, retard. 
This is the uh, HX850, so it is SLI compatible and um, you should be able to relatively comfortably run 280, 580s in SLI without any issues. Uh, Corsair do make a really good power supply. Uh, this is of course the 80 plus silver, so very good efficiency there. And the actual unit itself, of course they always do this, they have a massive box and then the power supply will be really quite small form factor. But yeah, as you can see, it's a fairly small power supply. Um, typical Corsair branding, very nice. And this is the HX series, so it's not completely 100% modular, but it does have a modular capability. I promised a viewer, several viewers actually, that I would go through and build a computer in front of everyone just to show you how it's done. Uh, I know very few of my friends that actually know how to build a computer. Um, so there's probably a lot of you out there who never built one. So definitely what we'll do is we'll have a look at how to install it properly and what you need. So to install a computer, all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver. That's pretty much it. Everything else comes, all the screws, they all come with. So one of the first things that you do is you put the CPU in and there's all like a little latch here and you just push it down and to the side and it'll flip up like so. Now, only bring that up when you are absolutely ready to install the CPU because you don't want dust to get on the pins, you don't want anything to get on the pins. Now, you can't really see it very well, but with a CPU, every CPU, there is little grooves in at the side which prevent you from putting it in the, the wrong way, basically. Because it is a square, so you, you can get it wrong. But there's little grooves there to stop you from doing that. So we'll bring that up. And we'll remove that tab. Now, at this point, I'd probably warn you guys to wear some anti static, something anti static, but I mean, I'm wearing thongs and I'm on concrete, so I'm fairly well grounded in this factory. But if you are at home and you're doing this on carpet, I'd definitely get an anti static. Um, wristband. Now this is your CPU, all your other pins are on the other side and it's very fragile so definitely don't drop this. And the way it goes in, it can only go in one way and that's this way. And what you do is you carefully place it on there and it should be able to just sit there lying flat you know you put it in correctly. All you do now, lap latch over and bring that down and around and that'll lock your CPU in. So we're pretty much halfway there. The, we'll install the actual H60 system later. Today we're gonna go through the easy process of putting RAM in. And dual channel is basically you use your, your pairs. So these are a pair and they came in the same pack. Uh, so most companies do matched pairs. And with these matched pairs, you can put them both on red and the other matched pairs, both on black. All right, so our RAM's in, and uh, it's not very color-coded to the build, but that's all right. Uh, the next part that we're gonna do is, is, especially when you get the H60, is the easiest part. You'll notice with the H60, it's already got the thermal interface material, or TIM, on there and it's evenly spread, so you don't have to worry about anything, it's already on there. That's cool. So what we'll do is we'll unheat that and we'll put our back plate on. Now back plate or retention plates basically go on there, well at the other side of this, and you want the rubber side to be on the motherboard because it's non-conductive. And so you'll put that on there and then you put the actual uh, CPU cooler on and you'll screw it down. And this basically just allows you to tighten it to the point where it won't make the motherboard bow, so you're not going to damage your components. Oh. 
check it out. Hang on. All right, so basically we've just put in the power for the hard drives and the DVD drive, which is all fairly non-complex. Uh, it fits, or it doesn't fit. In my case, it fits. And then all we're doing now is just powering the default fans that came. Um, as you can see, we've created a cable management nightmare. And that's particularly because we don't really care about power cable management at the moment. Um, pretty much, this, you know, if it was anyone else I'd care about it, because it's filled, it's just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Not where it's filled. <laughs> Whatever case you buy, you'll grab these things and you just match up the different instructions. So it says power minus, lead minus. So you plug that one into there. Yink. And then you'll have power lead plus. And then hard drive leads. Aces just make it really easy. Otherwise people would be like, what the hell am I plugging these things into? And you've got powers, you got your reset power and your, your normal power. So power plus ground, and your reset power. Really, really quite simple. It just, it doesn't get simple, more simple than that. And then all you do is just match that up with the corresponding pins in here. And away you go. So, like that. Ta da! Alright, so this is really, really quite simple. It's uh, basically just got all your USBs, and you can't get it wrong. Look, oops. Well, when you plug it in, you can't get it wrong. Like so. Uh, and then you plug this into whichever one you want. We just plug it into this one. Because that was cool. Ta da! And now your computer is fully set up. All we have to do is plug the power in. And away we go. Uh, we didn't show you this one, but this is the uh, XFi audio. So you can actually plug audio into the front. And it's uh, high quality audio. And uh, this one you don't actually use. So. Well, we don't use it with this motherboard anyway. And uh, that's pretty much how you set up a computer. So it's all, it's, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, a very big jigsaw puzzle. It's very easy to do. And uh, now everything's connected up. We've got, you know, CPU, graphics card, power supplies in. All the power cables are connected up, all the fans are connected up. And uh, we're ready to turn it on. And uh, we will try and overclock it, even though I have never overclocked i5 or i7. I've been meaning to do my own computers overclocking, but um, I just I haven't had the RAM. Of course, they were supposed to send, send RAM through, but apparently it got lost in the mail. So, if anyone from Corsair is watching this, please give me some RAM. Alright, so we installed everything and uh, it's all running well. We didn't have enough time to overclock it, which is unfortunate. However, we uh, will be overclocking this one as well. And uh, I've got to learn how to do it, so once I learn how to do that, I'll post a guide up here. Also, thank you for buying the grills. Um, the grill sale has just gone off the hook. We've pretty much sold heaps and heaps. i got to make more. And the uh, sale goes on to the 10th of October, so you haven't got yours. Go grab them now. Uh, good value, 25% off. So uh, that's it for me. I will see you guys later. Uh, until next video. See ya.